That's about the L200 with traction control, ABS, and engine lights on. P0107, Faro or MAP, circuit low. I'll check out the live data on that. Got some U codes in the ABS, so they're kind of. I think, like it says there, when it's a U, we're looking at something else. And I'm going to concentrate on this one, engine malfunction detected. So if we look at that, if we're communicating to the ABS, I'll not worry about it too much. I think I'll concentrate, we've got a fault with the engine malfunction. And that might be why we've got the ABS light on. Okay, we're back into the cruise control, we go back to the same engine fault code, the map and the barrow, so we're going to check that out. No problem communicating to the ABS module, and getting information up, power supply, stop lamps, I press the pedal and it changed. I'm not moving, so it's all zero, so I'm okay with that. I'm looking for the data on the battle sensor, and now in the engine computer. There it is, 99.9, .9, so that seems about right for this area that we're in. Let me find a map or boost pressure sensor. Boost. And again, 100 is one bar. 100 kPa is one bar. So that's about right. Let's start the car and see what happens. Remember the fault said it was low. Rev it up, it is responding. So it's reporting properly. I'll just compare it to a mechanical gauge and see if the two pressures match each other. Yeah, there's no dropouts, and then wiggling all the wires in that area, I'd even even tapping on the, the sensor itself. We're going the wires. No dropouts. Although, with this scan tool, it's quite slow at updating. I might miss them. I might be better checking this actually back probed at the pin. But if I'm back probed at the pin, I might be pushing it in and making a better contact. So, what I might do is pierce the wire in this case and wiggle it and see if I get a drop out. I'm sure the voltage is first with this pin. I've got the five volts. Center one as 1.8, which must equate to one bar. And the last one is zero. So I'll move my ground to the positive and get a minus voltage. So everything's fine. I'm going to go into the center wire. I might just go with this instead of putting a hole in the wire for now. I just don't want to have something that I'm actually pushing on the pin and tightening, tightening up a contact. So I think something's okay, but maybe it's not. So if I switch that, that to a graph so that we can see it, 2 volts per division, one volt per division, and I'll just change it the time, bring it down to five milliseconds for now. And I'll wiggle the wires. Now you see why I didn't want to really go for the pen first. I was going to use one of those person probes that would have stopped me from making a better contact with a pen and give me a false good contact. But I'm not losing anything there. 
voltage is staying exactly the same the whole time. So the low voltage, the only other things I can check is how it compares to an actual gauge, a mechanical gauge, and see if they're similar. It could be the tube that's blocked, it goes into here, there could be a slight blockage. The tube could be swollen or weak and losing some pressure. The other thing, got to remember that's going to change according to the turbo, and that's worked by this actuator here, going to a wastegate. We know it's a wastegate because it's on the pressure side, it builds up too much pressure on the intake, like it's meant to build up pressure. When it gets too much, it pushes on the diaphragm that's in this actuator and opens a wastegate. So we know it's a wastegate design. And that'll let the pressure out. Now I've connected a mechanical gauge. I've still got the volts on there. Still back probed on the signal wire. But this time we've put a T piece in for the mechanical gauge. And at the engine side, intake manifold side, I've got this thing so I can control the pressure. And I've still got the scan tool there, so if I raise the pressure... I'm actually not holding the pressure here. See that? It's not holding the pressure. Should do. Should be able to hold pressure. That's interesting. Why am I not holding pressure? I've plugged it up. See on this gauge this time, we're not getting any pressure. So there's the problem by altering that gauge. Ignore that one because that's in the T and I'm not using the T. I just use that. That's more accurate, I think, than this one. So if you look at this zero, how wide that area is, you can use this, you know, as a guide, but it's not going to be totally exact. So we can't get any pressure built up when we're actually plugged up. So you change it to vacuum. Can you get a vacuum? No, you can't hold a vacuum when we're plugged up at the other end of the hose. There we go. That was pretty easy. Okay. So if I try and get that to there, oh we are, we're right about there. I'm going to take it up another one to point two. Ah, it struggles to go a bit higher. It's right about where it needs to be when that's at point one. Okay, point one right there. That's one oh. When I get it to about point one, right there, let's try and do it, point one. So we're roughly the same. If I try and get it to point two here, point two, it should be 120. Right? 120, and it is roughly. I'm moving this about to try and keep it. Point two, which seems to be right about that sort of area. So, yeah, I think the pressure sensor's working. We just need a hose. So there's an idea where you get ABS faults that's related to something totally different. And in this case, it's just a hose. I'll see if we've got one kicking about somewhere. New hose in here, plugged off at the end. Same test again. I'm gonna give it a bit of pressure, and we're seeing it. It's staying. I'd also give it vacuum if I wanted. So now I know this new bit of hose is going to be okay. I'll connect it, clear the fault codes, it should be okay. All the modules there, clouds cleared. So that's fine now. That's a good thing, clear the fault codes. I'll maybe look at the live data and see if there's any change with the, um, with the boost pressure now. Now that I can remember properly what it was, but I'll maybe watch this back so that I know if there's any change. See the lights are out, which is a good thing. 
Yeah, the boost pressure, that was when I cranked it, that happened. So if you look at the minimum, that's 98.6 and the max is 100, so it looks like a big change, but it was hardly anything. I'll rev it up and see what happens. We can get this up to at the bottom, it shows 105. One, two, eight. One fifty, just about one fifty. The hose diameter in the new blue hose is actually smaller. I don't know what the sizes were, but it managed to stretch on. But it was, I mean, the internal hole size was smaller. So, we're reading pressure though, but it might still be enough to work. Hopefully it's going to be fine. No lights on anyway.